Warning, this content may be disturbing to some audiences. Subscribe. If you dare. So he gets to the job and his boss's boss, male, starts hitting on him ridiculously. Hey everybody, welcome to, an Ectost. People ask Reddit. People no longer bound by their non-disclosure agreement, what can you now disclose? Number 1. I signed an NDA after negotiating a six-figure settlement with my mortgage lender. Back in 2013. The bank illegally sold my home, while I was living there and making monthly payments. I discovered this when new owners evicted me and my three kids. At the time, I thought someone was trying to steal my identity, etc. I spent the next two years writing legal documents and had to represent myself in court. The bank owned every legit legal firm I contacted. Also, the first lawyer I hired took my last $7,000 and was promptly disbarred for misconduct with previous cases. I had no money, no home but I had a laptop, printer and access to the county court law library. We were about a week away from selecting a jury, when we came to a settlement agreement. Which bank? You ask. I can't tell you the name, but might I suggest that it rhymes with case. I received a posting on my front door. I went to the eviction court and lost, because technically the new owners paid for my house. I was given 7 days to move all my stuff, we had lived there 13 years, or face the sheriff. I had 3 kids. I didn't want the drama of handcuffs. So we packed and moved, then sought relief through the court system. They settled because they were worried that if the case went to trial, it would become public. Then, everyone would know, for certain, that they had lied, cheated and swindled to steal homes from hardworking people. The bank would lose when no one took out new loans with them. In the end, each of my kids, now in their 20s, got an expensive new car and I live at the beach. Number 2. That married grocery store manager in his late 40s was, indeed, having sex with that 17-year-old courtesy clerk in the compressor room. This was 15 plus years ago when I was a person in charge, and not yet a full assistant store manager. Our store in the back room had a couple of rooms upstairs, a large room that housed all of our electrical breakers and backup generators, and a room that housed all of our compressors that kept our freezers and coolers running. Both were locked at all times for security reasons. They were accessible only through the back room. The 17-year-old courtesy clerk, Bagger, had worked there for a while. She was, uh, not the best worker. She had a habit of disappearing for a half hour or hour at a time. I, and the other picks complained and tried discipline, but the store manager blocked it. So, we just dealt with it. Yes, she was an attractive blonde. I was in charge one night and we got an alarm that one of the compressors was low. It was my job to check the level, record the compressor number, and turn it in. When I went up to the room, the door was propped open with a bucket. I assumed whoever worked in the room last left it open. If you have never been in a compressor room before, I have to tell you that it is loud. Our store had several diesel engines that powered the compressors. I proceed into the back of the room, come around a corner to see the girl, not quite naked, but not fully clothed, being serviced by our store manager, who had left for the day hours ago. Neither saw me and I hightailed it out of there. Looks like she was decompressing the manager. I wrestled with what to do. I was worried about my career at the time, so I called the security hotline and made an anonymous call and told them in vague terms what happened, and that they should contact me about details. I'm 100% certain that they knew it was me that called. A couple of days later, the store manager was suspended, and I'm interviewed, the assistant store manager is interviewed, and the picks. They tell us not to discuss it, so of course we did. I was a little late to the party. Almost everyone knew. The store manager would use his store keys to come into the back room, meet the courtesy clerk, and then would hook up in the compressor room. She was not the first teenager he had done this with at this store and others. They fire the store manager, and like an idiot, he sues. Dozens of people are deposed, NDAs are drawn up and signed. He thinks better of it, drops the suit and that's the last I ever heard of him. The girl quit right after the store manager was suspended. Number 3. It's not an NDA. It's a secrecy agreement with DOD that elapsed after 25 years. I worked as a programmer for the US Air Force on the global USAF budget in 1979 through early 1981. There was a period of time after Reagan became a leading candidate, but before he won the election or took office. Jimmy Carter was a lame duck president, and many senior officers really, really hated him. During this time, the USAF had flown the B-1. 
Not the B1A, not the B1B, this was when it was just the B1. People had spent a significant portion of their careers working on delivering the B1 program. They really, really believed in the B1 as a strategic long-range supersonic bomber. Jimmy Carter hated the B1. He viewed it as a wasteful, unnecessary, bloated program designed to keep the builders afloat at the expense of the taxpayer. He had cancelled the project in something like 77. But a couple number flying examples were available, but never to see service. Reagan loved the B-1. It was everything he loved about our military programs. Fast, sexy, high-tech, and better than anything the Soviets had. All of that being said, here's what happened. Jimmy Carter gave explicit orders that the only two B-1s currently flying be broken up into parts, the program completely cancelled, the engineering materials be archived at the Pentagon, and all funding ended. He wanted direct evidence sent to him that this had happened, in the form of pictures of the broken up aircraft. Ronald Reagan was informed of this order by sources in our organization. Reagan let it be known that Carter's order was absolutely not to be followed under any circumstances. Now, where do I come in? I was just this guy working on the AF budget. It was a top secret clearance, mainly because any analyst could correlate money to named projects, both globally and on basis. So, one day I am going over daily reports and I see this massive new expenditure for Wright-Patterson. It's not in the approved project list. It's not in the unapproved project list either. So clearly, it has not gone up to Congress. Yet, the money is actually in the dispersal. So I go to my boss and I point it out. It doesn't belong there, so obviously it's a mistake. He agrees, and we reverse it. A couple of days later, all hell breaks loose when a general officer I had never seen before comes rampaging through the office demanding to know who shorted his funding. Now, at this point we get hauled into a room, sworn to secrecy, and told to fund this maintenance project. What was the project? Pay a huge team of contractors to very carefully disassemble one of the B-1s, drag in parts from other aircraft, show it being crushed, and send pics to Carter. Meanwhile, reassemble the plane and hide both of them inside black hangars. And that was why Reagan was able to have the program restarted literally within days of taking office. The program was fully back online in 1981. Number 4. Commenter. Not me but my cousin. He was working his first job in marketing in one of the top marketing firms in the country. My cousin is ridiculously good looking, used to be a model for A and F not just the local store models, but one of the national models, and dresses well. So he gets to the job and his boss's boss, male, starts hitting on him ridiculously. He's invited to lunch, dinner and asked if he wants to go to the boss's weekend home, all the time turning him down. One time in the car his boss told him how quickly he would advance if he spent the weekend with him, and my cousin recorded the entire conversation. He nopes the boss and then ghost him on invites for weeks until the boss stops asking. Fast forward to three months after he's hired and he's doing his review with HR and his immediate supervisor is there. He starts to hear about how he's not a good fit, not a team player etc. They let him know they were terminating him, and he grabbed the paperwork they wanted him to sign and put it in his pocket. Then he pulled out his phone and played his boss's recording. After he was done, he looked at the HR manager and asked if she had anything to say. They both left the room acting shell-shocked and he stayed there in the conference until the HR manager came back an hour later. She put her boss on the conference line and they started telling him it was illegal to record private conversations, they would file charges etc. He laughed and told them he would go to the press, and that he knows they would love to put him on TV. Three days later he signed a non-disclosure and picked up a check almost big enough to pay for his three years of law school. For anyone wondering, no, the guy who harassed him was not fired, and he has since been promoted again by the company. Person B. The recording issue depends on the state. I happen to live in a single party recording state, which means that recording a conversation is legal as long as one person taking part in it knows. You don't have to disclose to anyone else in the conversation that you are recording it. This saved my ass a bunch of years back when I got into a thing with my boss. At one point he lost his shit and I was recording the interaction. A few months later he wrote me up, saying that I had been the one who started everything and was yelling at him, which would have meant I was ineligible to work on a project that would have led to a pretty nice bonus. I went two levels above him, I knew that this person hated my boss, and played the tape. My boss was called in and told to remove the write-up from my file. He refused. He was told that I had proof and if I was unable to work on the project, they would ultimately have to give me the bonus anyway, 
with the funds coming from his budget, which would later affect his performance bonus. Still no. My boss left the meeting and went back to his office and beat the hell out of his garbage can, all the time claiming I had set him up. I ultimately was moved to a different department, meaning my line was taken away from him so he had one less person in his department, and got to work on the project. The next year, my ex-boss suddenly had to retire early. Thank God for living in a single recording state. I highly recommend everyone check the laws in the state they live in. Number 5. Commenter. I disclosed to a minority partner that the majority partner owed him 100k. He could have easily received a check for that amount, but he sued for 700k, spent 300k on a lawyer and got nothing. This CEO would have paid, I explained it to him and he agreed. It was all super clear in two pages of documents. The guy suing brought so much other stuff to the table that it created a giant confusing smoke screen. I had told him that was exactly what was going to happen. His lawyer spent six months on it before talking to me, the only person who knew what happened. It was absolutely bizarre, I spent a full day on the witness stand and the lawyer never even asked me about the 100k, which was the only real issue. I snuck it in, as part of another answer, but it was a fart in a hurricane. Should have, but his lawyer sucked so bad that he didn't even want to talk about the 100k. I made it very clear that there wasn't anything else there, but he subpoenaed boxes of bank records to rifle through. I went over there and told him that there was nothing to find, but he was just going through bank statements hoping to find something. It's like someone stole $500 from you and it was on video, but you accused them of murdering your grandfather, and they were arrested for murder and go on trial, and the trial goes on for a week and you never mention the $500. Person B. I saw the owner of a company I worked for do the same thing. A sales employee sued for not getting proper commissions and the CEO easily paid 10 times that amount fighting it in court, only to lose and have to pay anyways. Make sure to share your personal story in the comments below and have the opportunity to be featured in a future video. Also, if you like these topics don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification button to continue seeing more content like this every day. See you next time.